Oprah is an iconic figure undeniably. The work she has put in since the 70s paid off tremendously to the point she is now one of the few black women billionaires on the planet. Which is remarkable considering how Oprah grew up and how she was able to attain her riches. As we know, becoming a billionaire isn't a walk in a park, and some may say it actually hardens you. To have that level of power, because we know how money makes the world go round, makes you a shark. And becoming a shark leads to people getting crossed along the way. You put yourself in the position to be selfish with your career, and you'll do anything to maintain that position and connections. Since social media has become the new grounds of media, there has been some ties cut to how the media is actually controlled. Oprah became a sensation that will never be duplicated. Oprah becoming the first black talk show host in the late 70s was groundbreaking, and each step along the way, no one predicted how this woman from Mississippi would take the world by storm. One of the many reasons why people liked Oprah was because she was relatable. Based on her poor upbringing, her size, her hair, Oprah became an outlet for the black audience to watch. She constantly humanized herself by sharing her own personal experiences as a black woman and from her childhood in turn creating a parasocial connection with her audience who were also going through their own personal trials. She became the spokesperson for success, relaying messages about moving mountains to get what you deserve out of life, not becoming the product of your situation, giving her fans the motivation to become successful by becoming the inspiration to success. That matched with her natural charisma, she was fun and she wasn't scared to be loud and laughed at herself. She didn't let baseless commentary define her worth or her path to success. Well, the new sister news director came to me and said, you know, your hair is too long, it's too thick, your eyes are too far apart, your nose is too wide, and your chin's too long, and you need to do something about it. You thought Christina Kraft had a problem. <laughs> so, but they sent me to this shishi poo poo salon, and in a week I was bald. Just devastated. devastated. You mean they, they did it to your hair? Yeah, I had a French perm and it all fell out. Every little strand, I was left with three little sprigles <laughs> in the front. Funny to you. They tried to change me, and then they're stuck with a bald black anchor woman. I went through a real period of self-discovery because you have to find other reasons for appreciating yourself. It's certainly not your look. The charisma was attractive, and it helped Oprah connect with people. Throughout her show, Oprah has had so many iconic segments. Her famous guest stars like Tom Cruise. You behave this way before. I know. Have you ever felt this way before? Her famous giveaways. that has been parodied more times than I could count, but it will never be forgotten. Then you have her serious moments where she breaks barriers and does things that no one would dare to do for the time period. In just five months of her show being aired, Oprah went to Forsyth County where no black person has lived in over 75 years. She foreshadowed the extremely racist town and had to leave before the sun went down. Nigger go home. They came from where? Yes, ma'am. They came from. My name's Frank Shirley. I'm the head of the committee to keep Forsyth and Dawson County white. They. Then she had the seven of the Little Rock Nine on her show. The Little Rock Nine were the first kids to be integrated into an all-white school. The segment had bullies face the group in detail and apologize for their past treatment. She had a huge platform and people adored her opinion. Her word became bond for her audience, so everything Oprah praised or denounced had an effect. In 1997, the American cattle industry was already in the spotlight amid growing concerns of mad cow disease in England. A discussion with animal rights activist Howard Lyman focusing on mad cow disease put the famous talk show host at odds with the American cattle industry. Oprah, on her show, denounced beef, and it sent shockwaves throughout the meat industry. Because of this, the meat industry literally lost millions of dollars. A group of executives rallied together to file a lawsuit against her. There was an Oprah episode that ended with Oprah having to go to court. She did an episode on dangerous foods, and she had a guest on who talked about the possibility of mad cow disease being in American beef, and Oprah said this. Stop me cold from eating another burger. Because of how influential Oprah was, people hung on to every word. It was actually called the Oprah effect. This actually caused the American beef industry to take a big hit. One rancher ended up suing Oprah for $10 million in damages from lost business. The court case took place in Texas, but because Oprah shot 200 episodes of her show every year, she ended up moving her entire show down to Texas, would do court during the day, and then would shoot her show at night. But because it was an ongoing lawsuit, she wasn't allowed to talk about it on the show. I'm here in Amarillo, y'all know why. And, uh... <laughs> 
can't talk about it since we were going to be in town for what I can't talk about we're in town for. Uh, and we, we roasted uh, b uh, roasted sides of beef and did uh, bananas foster over the fire. Beef did you? Uh, and you should. The jury voted in favor of Oprah and she ended up winning her case. Free speech not only lives, it rocks. <laughs> Oprah has struggled years to control her weight. Being skinny and thin has always been trendy. Oprah's weight made her very self-conscious as she was open to the public for ridicule, not fitting what is considered the ideal look. She's fasted or in other words, starved herself to lose weight. I said to them when I first started this liquid protein supervised medically supervised fast. The reveal episode, she also pulled out a wagon of fat on stage to show to the audience her 67 pound weight loss. She has openly spoken out years later about how she regrets this episode. But at this point, she became more relatable to the people who had the same problem. Her endorsements to Weight Watchers blew the company's sales. She invested in the company acquiring a 10% stake while also associating the company with her brand. Weight Watchers became the most popular diet company. Oprah's upbringing really inspires a lot of people. She has dealt with a lot throughout her developing years. Her story from being born to her single teenage mother and her grandmother raising her until she was six years old. Well, you know, first of all, I want to say my grandmother is the reason I am able to stand here today, uh, sit here today. She did the best she could. She um, was a maid, was a domestic worker her entire life. And never um, would not have imagined in this lifetime the life that I now am able to live. She's never had the finer things as a kid. She was so poor, she claims she had two pet cockroaches. This exaggeration is absolutely ridiculous. Like, I don't doubt she's met a few cockroaches, but it was just too much. Her cousin Catherine was the one to expose the alleged truth. She says she has no idea where Oprah got that nonsense from and says she regularly received new clothing and toys from her family members. She apparently asked Oprah why she told those lies and Oprah told her because that's what people want to hear. The truth is boring. And that is where you begin to understand Oprah. But it goes for a lot of celebrities. Some celebrities exaggerate how poor they are or about being poor at all. The story of rags to riches is more entertaining than coming from riches and staying rich. Oprah definitely grew up poor, but speaking about her class to such low levels of having pet cockroaches is gross. Regardless, Oprah has dealt with a lot of traumatic experiences. When Oprah was a child, she was aired by her uncle and became pregnant at 14 years old. Recognizing in that moment, that I have been abused since I was nine years old, raped at nine years old, abused at 10 years old, molested for all of those years, and now pregnant as a result of that. And looking around the detention home at all of these girls who had been placed there for being bad girls. And I remember having a moment thinking, now I am officially a bad girl. I'm now, for the rest of my life, going to be called a bad girl because I'm going to be put in this place. And thinking to myself sitting there waiting to be processed that I really don't belong here and I don't, I don't even know how this happened to me, that I am in a place for bad girls because I didn't feel like I was a bad girl. This became a very sad situation in her life where she had to cope with having a baby she wasn't attached to and losing said baby. It was a lot to handle for her. As traumatic as that story is, you'd be surprised by what she has to say years later about being touched as a child. In 1993, Oprah interviewed Michael Jackson at his Neverland Ranch in what became the most watched interview in television history. Michael gave Oprah a chance because she was a black woman making a name for herself and they were actually friends. She was close to the Jackson family and were often photographed together. This was the first time that Michael had given a televised interview since 1979. She asked him a lot of intrusive questions like if he was a virgin and about his essay claims and why he likes to be around children, including his vitiligo. You are not taking anything to change the color of your skin. Oh God, no. You did not purposely. We're trying to control it and using makeup mm -hmm. evens it out because it makes blotches on the skin and I have to even out my skin. But you know what's funny? Why is that so important? You know, that's 
that's not important to me. I'm a great fan of art. I love Michelangelo. Mm -hmm. If I had a chance to talk to him or read about him, I would want to know about what inspired him to become who he is, the anatomy of his craftsmanship, not about who he went out with last night or why he decided to sit out in the sun so long. What's wrong with, I mean, that's what's important to me. How much plastic surgery have you had? But to be fair, Oprah is a journalist, so she did ask the questions that people wanted to hear. It's the fact that the interview was uncensored and unscripted. Michael trusted her enough for that just to pull a move that is considered backstabbing to his family. Oprah has stood by two men accusing Michael Jackson of S.A. in an interview special that aired immediately after the Leaving Neverland documentary. Oprah received a ton of backlash for this, where she openly said, I know people all over the world are going to be in an uproar and debating whether or not Michael Jackson did these things or not. Did he do it or not do it? Whether these two men are lying or not lying. A lot of people found this hypocritical because when it came to Harvey Weinstein and his 80 plus victims that has come out to tell their stories or John of God who was a self-proclaimed healer, he claimed to channel the spirits of saints and doctors performing surgeries with his bare hands or scissors. Oprah openly endorsed his practice on her show. But behind the scenes, the man was a sicko. He was portraying a facade. He preyed on vulnerable women and girls, S.A. and R'd them under the guise of healing. He also ran a baby trafficking ring, selling newborns to childless couples for up to $50,000 each. And authorities were reportedly contacted by more than 600 accusers, ranging in age from 9 to 67, who claim they were sexually abused by the so-called miracle worker. Faria's accusers include his own daughter, who says her father sexually abused her between the ages of 10 and 14. He fathered hundreds of children with his victims, some of whom he later abused as well. Over 200 women coming out accusing this man of disturbing acts. These men were convicted, found guilty of their charges, but Oprah didn't talk to their victims, where Michael was actually acquitted of his charges and this still follows him even after his death. Oprah's comments were very hypocritical to the audiences. She expresses her thoughts on the backlash as people's lack of understanding patterns, that it's not about one person, it's about the pattern, it's about the seduction, and people call it molestation, but there is a big seducing that goes on. That was important enough for her to take the hateration for. Amid all this controversy, she made some alarming commentary about SA victims. Do you admire? somebody you respect or maybe even love and it feels good I mean if you're seven years old and somebody which I was trying to say this to my friends who had children you're seven years old and someone is stroking your penis it feels good right. even though you don't have a name for what that is it feels good and when I first said this years ago people were like you are crazy because everybody wants to believe it's like sexual assault and you're being thrown up against the wall and you're being raped and I have said for years if the abuser is any good it you won't even know it's happening. Oprah has spoken about being touched by two people starting at the age of nine. It begs to wonder if that good feeling was also in relation to herself or the combined 300 victims of Harvey and John. Oprah did what she did because they told her to. Maybe it was also to distract from what was going on with her old friends. In 2017, a British actress named Katie Ann Noble filed a lawsuit in federal court in Manhattan for criminal sex trafficking, suing Weinstein because he coerced her under the guise of helping her with her career. She said she met Weinstein by chance in 2014 at an after party for the British Academy Film Awards, where he introduced her to Oprah and Naomi Campbell. He repeated so many times, it's going to be good for you, I have something in mind for you, we're going to be in touch. And he was with people in which I admired dearly. He was with Naomi Campbell. He had Oprah Winfrey there with him, who entered the room and was swinging off his arm and just seemed like a very dear friend. And these, like Oprah, Naomi, Rita, and Georgina, they all sat at his table. And for me, you know, meeting Oprah was like, oh my God, like I would have thought that. I would have to be someone who is established, who everyone would have had to know about before I was privileged enough to meet someone like Oprah. So that gave me so much confidence. 
in him at the time when he approached me, I thought, obviously this man has something amazing in store for me. Saying she felt dazzled and lucky that he said he was interested in her. A year later, things turned when he invited her back to his hotel room to look at her showreels together, but instead, he then forced her to perform acts on him to prove to him that she really liked him. And never once did she have her on her show or any other of the victims to tell their story. But none of it takes away from another factor of Oprah portraying the helping shoulder and reliable teammate. In 2009, Monique starred in the movie Precious. She got 50k for the role. The movie turned out to be bigger than expected and what was supposed to be a great opportunity for Monique to step into the world as an actress, a different actress, resulted in her getting blackballed from Hollywood. ...to promote the movie Precious under Lee Daniels Productions. Okay. I promoted Precious under Lee Daniels Productions. I did Oprah, I did magazines, I did TV shows, I did all of the promotions I was contractually obligated to do. Okay. That was it. That was it. I'm done with it. Done. Okay. Done. Now Precious is going to can. Right? Mm -hmm. At the time I have the Monique show. Mm -hmm. I am on the Spread the Love tour. I have toddler babies. And I'm also a wife. Mm -hmm. Okay? Monique, the Monique show is like down for maybe a couple days, a week or so. Right. I got some days off on the tour. I'm going to relax with my family. Right. Because once they sold the movie. Right. You didn't sell me. Right. After I'm done with my promotions, Lionsgate reaches out to my husband. Mm -hmm. Initially, they think they're talking to my attorney. Right? Mm -hmm. And they say, we want Monique to come to Cannes. To, she promoted so well in the United States, mm -hmm. we want her to go international and promote the movie and do Cannes. Okay. I tell my husband, please let them know I respectfully decline. I appreciate it, but I respectfully decline. I'm going to spend some time at home. Right. Lionsgate calls back. We really would like for Monique to come to Cannes mm -hmm. to promote this movie. Please let them know I respectfully decline. I'm going to spend time with my family. Lionsgate calls back and says, what is it going to take for us to get Monique to come to Cannes? We'll give her another week in France. We'll upgrade her room. My husband said, is there a dollar amount attached to what you're asking for? Oh, we, we will never pay anyone to promote a film. Never. He said, we understand. And we're never going to work for free. You're asking her to do something that she's not obligated to do. Correct. Well, what is this the attorney? He said, actually, I'm her manager and, I, and her husband. Now we can put it on the husband's being difficult. Right. Right? Okay? So I don't owe anybody anything. That's why I was never sued. Now we go to the Hoodie Awards. Tyler Perry is there. Okay? Mm -hmm. Tyler Perry calls me in his room. Now, when I go into Tyler Perry's room, his staff is in there. Now, you ready to holler laughing? Yes. Okay, I take my security in there with me because I always want to have somebody with me. Right. Right? Tyler Perry does this. <coughs> and the people scattered. They all left out the room. I said, look at this shit right here. You saw me. And they all scattered. That wasn't the light. That's for the people. You don't like clap lights on? Lights off, because they got their asses up okay, out of okay, there, okay? Okay, okay, So at the time, my security looked at me. I said, you don't work for Tyler Perry. You could. Touche. So Tyler Perry says to me, listen, Monique, we really need you to, you know, promote this film, because if you get nominated for the Oscar, your next movie is going to be three to five million dollars. If you win it, your next movie is six to eight million dollars. I said, Tyler Perry, who you talking to? I'm a black woman. When they gonna pay that kind of money? No, I'm telling you, that's what it is. And, and, and if you just go and promote it, I said, listen, brother, you can pay me to promote it. Because at the time, now him and Oprah are producers on the film. Right. I said, you can pay me to do it. I don't care where the check come from, but y'all just gotta I, I pay just me to the do money. it. He said, I'm not in the habit of giving out money for free. I said, and I'm not in the habit of working for free. But you gave T.D. Jakes a check for a million dollars. But that's another story, and I'm back. Mm -hmm. So when he then says that, it's like, listen, we both mutually agree. You don't give out free money. I don't we work for free. free. We hug, Shannon. 
When we were done talking, we hugged. Do you hear me? Yes. We hugged like brother and sister, like it's cool, he understand. Right. Okay? Okay. Oprah Winfrey calls my husband. I want y'all to take your time, because I'm getting ready to go. Yeah, you, that's your camera, right? Yeah, because the people at home, they sitting there like, Moni, what happened? Bitch, I'm getting ready to tell you. <laughs> she calls my husband. Okay. My husband explains to her what's going on. She says, there have been times I've had to draw the line in the sand. So my husband said, well, what is different between you and Monique? You've got to draw the line in your sand when you know they're asking you for too much. She said, you're absolutely right, and I understand your position. You're right in the position you're taking. So when you're looking at me saying, well, what happened? I'm telling you what happened. But, okay, she's saying that privately, but did she voice that publicly? Did you hear her say it? I did. Did you hear her say it? JT, did you hear her say it? No. Zach, did you hear her say it, Zach? Regina, did you hear her? Tommy, no one seemed to hear that publicly. She said that privately. Now, when she said that, see, everything we're saying to you, it can be proven. She had him on speakerphone and that when she was talking to him. Mm -hmm. In that room was a man named Reggie Wells, who just passed, who used to be Oprah Winfrey's makeup artist, mm -hmm. who he had a conversation with me and my husband. Now, for you babies that's good with the little internet, we had a, a show on called Monique and Sydney Finding a Way to Be Unoffended. Finding a way to be unoffended. Reggie Wells is on that show speaking about Oprah Winfrey. Reggie Wells said, Monique, I was there that day. He said, and when y'all got off the phone, he lo I looked at her and said, why don't you just pay this woman the money? She deserves it. And she looked at him and said, I won't be paying her nothing. And he said, that's not right. And you know it's not right. Now that man shared that on that show. So I'm not saying nothing that hasn't been shared. So you have people that will say things in private, but won't do it publicly. I'm the person that I will say it in private and I'm going to say it publicly because that's the only way we make it right. But you don't need somebody to talk good to your face. You need somebody to talk good behind your back. So if you telling me, if you telling me what a great person I am in my face, but you telling me I'm dog poop behind my back, what good is that, Mo? What does that make those kind of people, Shannon? That's... What does it make those that's kind of cowardly. people? That's cowardly. That is cowardly. See, here's what's this. When we have our juggernauts, Oprah Winfrey, Tyler Perry, Steve Harvey, the Kevin Hart, these are our juggernauts of our community. These are the people that our babies say, when I grow up, I want to be that. Yes. I want to be like that. So we have to call those people to the mat and say, listen, what are you teaching our babies? You're feeding poison because you're showing them your private jet. I'm going to show you my mansion. I'm going to show you my fancy cars. But my character is shot and I'm bankrupt. I got a lot of money in my bank. It's more zeros than some of them can, than we can imagine. But their character, they are bankrupt. I never complained about the $50,000. I did everything I was supposed to do. No, nothing. It is when they started asking me to become a slave. It is when Tyler Perry and Oprah Winfrey started asking me to work for free. It is when they started doing the bidding for whomever the gatekeeper was at the time to say, we can get her. Remember the scene in Sparkle? You ever seen Sparkle with Irene Carroll? Yeah, and I Philip Michael baby. Thomas. Yeah. Remember when they was in the car because the Jew man was trying to get him to sign over that contract and he kept shaking his head like, you will not get me to turn my back on this woman. Right. That's what this is. We ain't turning our back. My husband ain't turning his back. He ain't signing up for something he know ain't right. right. And people have a problem with that. And we gotta keep speaking on it, Shannon, because the next one's coming for real. I would hate for you to have to sit another sister in this chair. Mm -hmm and she tell you the same story. From Oprah's perspective, this was considered an opportunity. The Cannes Film Festival is one of the biggest cinematic events in the world. The event attracts movie stars from across the globe and is an opportunity for movie industry professionals to meet up and celebrate the cinematic art. Monique had every right to decline, but it's not considered good business optics. Oprah and Tyler weren't gonna pay her for what they considered a good opportunity. It wasn't just Oprah who did this, it was Lee Daniels and Tyler Perry who tried to give Monique a bad rep. Eventually, things fizzled out with Tyler and Lee, so they came to a common ground. 
What makes the situation worse is what Oprah did the following year in 2010 when she interviewed Monique's family for her talk show. What Oprah did was basically pillow talk Monique to give her a heads up and bond with her just to turn around and stab her in the back. Oprah asked Monique if she could have her family on the show. Monique said no and Oprah went along with it anyways. When Monique saw this, she called up Oprah and asked her about it and Oprah basically said she didn't know they were going to be there. This really showed Oprah's nice nasty side. You are. Where Oprah Winfrey and I have a problem is Oprah Winfrey called us up and she said my brother wanted to come on the show and talk about him molesting me and he wanted to tell other parents how to look out for molesters. My brother Gerald is a charmer. So my mind thought was, because she said, do you want to come on? I said, I don't want nothing to do with that cat. I said, nigga, I know it's up to a scam, but people can change. And who am I to say he hasn't changed? It might really be different. So I don't want to get in the way of that. I just don't want nothing to do with it. She said, if you don't want me to have your brother on the show, I will cancel the show. No show will happen. But I wanted to call you up to see how you felt first. When I hung up that phone, brother, I looked at my husband and I said, that bitch is all right with me. That's a real Cause she kept it because she because she didn't have to call me up. She didn't have to say my brother was coming. She could have just ran with the shit and let it happen. I dig her for that. Now I begin to see commercials with my brother, my mother, my father and my other brother. Now, the reason why that means so much is because in the conversation we had about my brother, we then went deeper. And we begin to talk about our relationships with our mothers and our fathers. And I shared my relationship with her about my mother as she shared hers with me, which I will never repeat because she shared it with me about her mother and father. It might be something she shared with everybody, but made one to make me feel special. I don't know. Nonetheless, it was in our moment. I shared with her that me and my mother was not talking. I shared with her we were in a really bad place. I shared with her. I was hurt and, you know, trying to figure this thing out. She never said my mother was coming on that show because had Oprah Winfrey said, I'm going to have your mother, I would have said, shut it down. I don't need the world seeing how greedy my mother is. Shut that down. That's one of the reasons why we don't communicate because of my mother and father's greed. So I would, if you had given me the opportunity, I would have said, I can't put my mother, that's still my mother. Right. Okay? Now here comes this show. And here comes the commercials. And now I'm starting to see my mother and my father and my other brother who was my manager. We didn't discuss that, Oprah. Wait, he was your manager and he went to Oprah? He wasn't my manager at the time. Okay. Now I had already, you know, fired him. Gotcha. So I'm watching this show and I'm watching my father sit there who was a strong alcoholic. I'm watching him drunk. I'm watching my mother be greedy. I'm watching my other brother, who was my manager, be greedy. I know my family. And I'm watching my brother who molested me sit on this stage trying to paint this picture of I'm trying to be a help, but now I'm watching the scam. As much as they keep talking, I'm seeing the scam take place. Well, when it was all said and done, Oprah Winfrey calls me. And in that moment, I was still stuck in, this is Oprah Winfrey. How do I say, you had my mother, my father, my other brother, and I'm stuck in that moment. And when we hung up that phone, my husband looked at me and said, what's wrong with you? That's not what we made of. What happened at Oprah's school is very disturbing. She opened an all-girls academy in 2007. As time went, there's been a few scandals that plagued the school including, I might butcher this, but Virginia Tiny Makopo was charged with inappropriately touching several of the girls and soliciting inappropriate acts. That the former employee of uh, who was working at Oprah Winfrey uh, Leadership Academy for Girls. She was arrested yesterday 
for several charges, including uh, assault, indecent assault, uh, as well as uh, soliciting girls under the age to commit indecent assault. She flew down to the school to apologize while also citing her own experience with SA. The other side to the story is that the woman Virginia was actually acquitted of all 14 charges of abuse. Interesting enough, she was let off and Oprah called the verdict crushing because of her past, but it wasn't crushing to have Monique's pedo brother on her show. The school has hit a lot of weird scandals, including one girl who had a baby and put it in her backpack, and other girls um, performing inappropriate acts towards each other. It's very weird for this all-girls school to be riddled with so many sexual scandals. Moving forward, I know a lot of people have spoken out about Oprah's interview style and how she has her mean tendencies. Like the interview with Toni Braxton about her finances that had her crying during the segment. The Olsen twins interview where she questioned their weight even though she has been chastised in the same manner before. Beauty contest, they tell me you're a beauty contest winner. Yeah, I'm 50 pounds ago or so. Yeah, but, so, what'd you win? Well, I won the Miss Fire Prevention Contest. Was that a who? Miss what? Fire Prevention. So how'd you gain the weight? I ate a lot. <laughs> Oprah asks questions that people want to hear. The only issue is that she has had hypocritical moments. She's doing her job for ratings, but sometimes it begs the question, it's at the expense of who? To be in the position like Oprah as the first black talk show host and pioneer in the journalistic world to a black female billionaire, she has to build a lot of connections, rub the right shoulders to maintain her position. Keyword, maintain. Oprah is a shark who has to keep people happy, and being the shark hardens your exterior. And unfortunately, this nice nastiness that Oprah has portrayed over the years with her stances and how she moved with the people in her life, it makes people question Oprah's authenticity. Having a surplus amount of money, so much that you probably won't spend it before you die, people have an expectancy for you to be a pillar and donate your money to people in need. So when Oprah and The Rock set up a fund for the Maui fires in Hawaii, they got immediate pushback for asking people to donate for the cause. They donated a combined 10 million to fund the families of the devastation. Each family received between 1,200 to 3,000 in multiple rounds. But people felt like she should have donated more because she is a billionaire. A lot of people in society are going through their own rough period because of the crazy economy we're in. Her asking people to donate felt selfish because she is one of the richest women in the world. And the fact that they own large properties in Hawaii doesn't help. Oprah has bought millions upon millions upon millions of acres of land in Maui, even having her own private road. So if she can buy all this land, then she could cut the check to help people. And since she has all this money, she should do something. And she did. It just wasn't enough for people. Instead of looking at the government or the United Nations or these billion dollar companies to give back and write it off their taxes, she was vilified more because of her past behavior, which is valid for however you may feel about her. Instead of putting the pressure on the other millionaires who own property in Hawaii, we move the goalpost by being upset at her because you felt like it wasn't enough when she's not the only one. A lot of these journalists and hosts play nice nasty. Barbara Walters was nice nasty, Ellen is definitely nice nasty, and Oprah has her flaws that are definitely recognized. But to be in her position, you will always have to play your part or play a role just to be in that position, and Oprah is no different. And the character of a wise woman who's philosophical and has found the key to success within her life is just a piece of her. To come from Mississippi as a black girl that worked her way up, facing criticism and pushback to being a billionaire, you have to establish another side of yourself. You become this shark, regardless of what you think is right or wrong, Oprah is going to do what she needs to keep her crown. She's not perfect, but she is a perfect example of a nice, nasty hero. Well, that concludes today's video, guys. Let me know what you think about Oprah in the comments below, and make sure you like and subscribe. Toodles!